what's good everybody it's um innovation you go here with paul from team aps and tonight, hey guys what's up and tonight we're going to be discussing um six things we hit about konami and um Yu-Gi-Oh community so without further ado let's begin start by saying um there are a lot of things me and paul talked about before the video one of the things was um going into price structure for the actual konami and how they handle the Yu-Gi-Oh um scene what can you talk about that paul what do you think about the price structure um well before i get into that real quick <laughs> I just noticed you do that video intro perfectly. Like you, <laughs> you just went through that as if like that is just like every day. Like every day, just, <laughs> like it was so scripted. It's like this is how he starts every video. He, this is, this is actually a day in the office. Oh, um, four years ain't going, man. <laughs> but yeah, so price support. Believe it or not, I'm not like I don't actually have as strong of opinions on price support as I think some people. We'll do like i know some people are like really hate it and they're like we need cash and we need prizes because we travel and we have to get these hotels we have to get gas and like you know we spend all this time playing like why aren't we making money and other card games make money i mean th i wish there was money too i honestly do i get why they can't do it and i get why they're in a hard place like you know i just think that if they aren't going to be giving money then they really have to like step up the whole Whatever else it is that, you know, they're giving people. Like, I know they like to do the whole, like, oh, an iPad or a PS4 or something. But I really wouldn't be surprised. Like, I mean, why not just do some kind of, like, a gift certificate type of thing? Like, do you remember ARG when they did that? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, like, yeah. Like, they had the whole, like, okay, you get kind of a credit thing and you can get a prepaid debit card of, like, a thousand bucks or something. That'd be nice. Or even I think that would help. Or even outside of, like, gift certificates. Like, things like... Like, I hate the fact that I go to a regionals, and after I make top eight, tournament's over. At time to go home, it's like, I actually want to play out the regional. I actually want to see, can I become number one of the region? So, I feel like making regionals matter more would be great, like, giving a box to first place. Or, a like, when I used to play Naruto CCG, when you go to a, when you used to go to a regionals and you top eight, you getting, you're getting more product. So, it's not like you just yeah, top you eight did. and get mass. You get more product. And I feel yeah, like double down on the product, definitely. for sure. For YC, and I, and I mean double down. Like I'm not talking about this. Oh, you get like 12 packs. I'm talking like if you win this regional, I mean you should be getting like a case. Oh yeah, or a box like, even, or a box. Yeah, I, just like the first place could get like nearly a case, and like you know second place get like, it's like they get like that. Like some regions get a like, thousand people, especially in California. So like yeah, case, like some of these regions are big enough. For that. Uh, case, That's true. Case is definitely definitely uh, reasonable. So. Um, and then YCS, it's like, you top 32 of YCS, you, gotta, you get a playmat, which is great, it's exclusive, you can sell it usually for a 50 to 100 bucks, but what about a playmat and, like, a box? Like, I mean, Konami you know, prints, really they cool. print the product, so it's like, a case of, Yeah, like, it's very cheap cards, for them yeah, to do that, I would imagine. It's cost effective for them. What you about Something to else is actually, this, we probably should have thought of this before the video, is I think that they need a better ranking system. Like, let's be honest, that Kasi... Thing doesn't like I don't, right. I don't think really anyone keeps up with that some sort of a system of rankings where you could actually like redeem your ranking points for like for product right like okay say i go to a regional and i get top eight and that gets me like 60 points i'm, I'm just throwing out numbers right, so that right. gets me like 60 points and you know maybe topping 32 or ycs gets me like 100 points and you know all this there's some formula that gives you points and i can exchange like 50 points for a box of the latest set. That'd be and nice. if I've been going to lots of regionals every weekend, I've been going to lots of YCSs, I've built up a lot of points. So now I can get, you know, a couple of boxes or it, it could even be, you know, mats, exclusive mats that like you just it, redeem your points for. So that way it isn't just, oh, I top eight of this regional, I got like my, my mat and my like, deck box. Okay. Right. Or even like a um, points from going to locals, like maybe give like, yeah, give you even point, locals should give, give you, you like a point for winning a locals would be great too. That's true. Like just something like that. Because if they aren't going to give money, then they at least need to be doing, you know, doing more doing like something. that. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. So okay, outside of prize structure with Konami, um, I also talked about how st more strict I feel like judges need to be. I, I guess it's branches outside of Konami, even into the card game world. But when I played Naruto, it was the same way because a lot of people been giving konami a lot of slack for like when they 
when the judges are walking around, they see an illegal play, the judges immediately won't say anything. And it's their job not to say anything. They can if they want to. It's up to the judge. But for the most part, they don't. If they if they see an illegal play, they don't have to say anything. What do you think about that? Uh, like I get why they don't want to interrupt a game. It makes sense, but like when you consider what happens after a, something doesn't get called, like there's more drama if you don't call something when you see it than if you do correct it. So I agree with you. I mean, I think like if you see something wrong and you're a judge, you need to just say it. Like maybe a player is going to get mad at you about it, but honestly it's better that things are going right than like someone finding out later on that like, you know, something happened and they got screwed out of a win. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think judges should say more. I don't know why they don't. I don't know if they're just, like, scared. I mean, scared it's, just their, or... it's just in their policy. I thought it was a scary thing, too. But even in when I played Naruto CCG, I did, I did, I didn't judge events, but I judged, like, little side events and stuff like when I used to go to Gen Con and stuff. And they'll tell us, like, you can stop any, um, you can stop a gameplay if you want, but you don't have to, and it's not required because they feel like people should know what they're doing. And I think that's a flawed thought with companies due to the fact that a judge is looked up to as a person that's there to make sure the game play flow correctly, kind of like how it would in the automated system like YGL Pro and et cetera. So, I mean, judges, I feel like, need to be more strict and more on their game for a lot of st- stuff won't happen. And not, not to mention, too, since Konami's doing a live streaming, it looks really unprofessional for judges not to say something. Like, they see an illegal play, they should say something, especially during a live stream. But to not- Yeah, I think it's different with the live... I think with the live streams, 100%, they should say stuff. I think that when it's just, like, kind of on the floor, like, just walking around tables, I get why they maybe hesitate more. Right, Like, right. just because you don't want to just... You don't want to interrupt a game, right? Like, definitely, definitely. Well, especially I, without context, right? Well, like, go I, ahead. Sorry, sorry. I was gonna, I was gonna say I, I would want them to interrupt like feature matches, not like on the floor, but like say for example, if you have a judge watching a feature match, and they know the opposing player is doing an illegal move, not misplaying, but doing an illegal move, and both players are, and they, you could tell that player is like a high caliber player. And you know they know what they're doing, and the judges know what they're doing, but the judges is not going to say anything. I feel like that's bull, in my opinion, just due to the fact that they're a judge for a reason. It's like if you watch, like, basketball or something, that's like not calling a foul or, or, or whatever, you know. Yeah, no, I agree. I think in live streams there's, like, no excuse. They get a lot of flack for not doing that. And it, it just it's like, why is there a judge there if they're not going to? <laughs> I mean, I guess it goes down to, too, like, they get paid in product. They don't get paid actual cash, so, of course, they're not going to take the job seriously. I feel like if Konami actually hired, like, judges for pay and make that their job to go to YCS, it's like a seasonal thing. Go to these YCSs, you get paid, like, let's say, because when I used to um, work for um, Bandai when we did Naruto stuff, they would, I don't know how Konami does it, they, they would give us, like, $40 a day with a box of the current product. So that's how band I used yeah. to do things. I thought that was pretty cool. So maybe a Konami can do that same thing. Give the judges like forty to fifty a day for um, judging a white or regionals, and then well, product. they do they do get a stipend. It's you know not exactly as good, but right, right. It covers it's your. Just, it just sucks when you see know. smaller companies doing better than a multi million dollar company. Not saying that Konami is a small Bandai is a small company because Bandai is just as probably as big as Konami, especially on the toy market. But a smaller game. Even doing bet more for their players in a bigger game, I feel like it's bad press, honestly. Yeah, that's true. Speaking of bad press, actually, um, my next one is probably just that I think Konami should do a little more in social media. Oh yeah, definitely. um, like recently they've done a little bit better. Like you know they have the official Yu-Gi-Oh Facebook and this Twitter, and and they post stuff, and they even have the, the YouTube channel. But you can still tell it's so contrived and so corporate. Like, you know, it's just, <laughs> this is a new set. Buy it today. And it's just kind of like, what if they would make posts that are a little bit more, like, playful and interactive? You know, like, hey, guys, like, what's your fate? Like, you know, your opponent activates Max C. What do you do? And, like, let people just respond in the comments. Or, like, you know, hey, guys, you know, Respond to this with your favorite, blah, blah, blah. And, like, the first five people to do it might win this exclusive deck right, box. Like, right. 
just kind of engage the audience a bit more so every post isn't just okay pick up duelist saga available now like that's well in the defense of konami honestly for the social media thing after talking to a konami rep well not konami rep but a someone who knows konami you probably know who i'm talking about paul i met him in ycs minneapolis and him and a few other people straight up told me it's all pretty much on japan at that point when um comes down to like anything social media anything promoting anything when it comes to konami in general it all goes down to japan so the the in the japanese they're really particular on how they want to do things and it's like since Yu-Gi-Oh is a japanese game their word is final so i think konami of america i feel like they get a lot of unwarranted slack but with that being said yeah. i feel like they um they just got to follow the corporate rule, meaning they don't want to lose their job at the end of the day. But I will agree with you on the fact that they can do more They can, when it comes to certain things on social media. I'm pretty sure Japan's not that strict when it comes down to Facebook posts. But, hey, we can never know. I, I was just told by a few different people, different sources, that anything that comes down to, like, cash pricing and, like, how can I, I know that's social definitely. Media, yeah, that, that's... That's all coming from Japan. I know a lot of that Kazuki just falls Takahashi, back to the and Kazuki Takahashi and stuff. on how he wants the game run, which is foolish because it's like the game's been running what fifteen years strong. All the kids that played the game grew up and still play the game, so it's like we want to obviously be compensated. Like nowadays, most kids are playing Pokemon and Minecraft. They don't give a fuck. They don't give. They don't care about Yu Gi Oh that much. I mean, some do, but some don't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I. <sighs> I'll give him a little bit, like, I mean, okay, like, we can't be in his shoes, so I know, you know, when you, I feel like in, in his position, when you've made something that's kind of your brainchild, and it's gotten really popular, but at the end of the day, like, it's still your creation, I see why you would be touchy about, like, what does and doesn't happen to it, and, like, how it is and isn't represented, and if it's just, if something goes against sort of your just what you were going for when you were creating it. I see why you'd be against it, but I I think that with the territory that it is, like it'd be different if like Yu-Gi-Oh was just just a manga, right? And like so the manga supported themes like not playing for money. And that'd be all right. But because it's a trading card game, because it's something that gets sold and played competitively, it's like you're kind of entering that territory of like you know what you signed up for. People are going to want money and and stuff like that so i get why he doesn't want to do it i don't agree with it but like i get it right so i mean i just think you know probably originally never thought you get will blow up the way he did that's really probably it and now he's kind of in this odd spot where like his precious child is like in the spotlight but he still wants to maintain the whole like integrity and it's right. it's tough like I'm, i don't want to just say like He's just being dumb, and that's just all there is to it. But, it, eh, eh. I mean, their social media can't Rock in a hard like, place. A little bit of responding on Facebook, a little bit more responding on the... I feel like their YouTube channel should allow comments, but I'm pretty sure that comes down from Japan, because even in Japan, you can't respond on comments in their, on their YouTube channel. And Japan is recently... that's... I, I think... I, I wish... I agree with you. I wish they allowed comments... But then you gotta remember, like the the community that we're in, where like if they allowed comment those videos, there would just be so much trolling. Like, do you you know how on the Facebook page before the ban list came out, like it was just nothing but like, like Konami would be like, here's a new pack, a new product that comes out today. All the comments, where's the ban list? Where's the ban list? Where's the ban oh, list? Yeah. Like you know, so it's like if they did it in the videos, people would just thumbs down everything and be like. You guys didn't give us a ban lister. Why did you ban my precious construct? You know, kill right, yourselves. Right. It's just like there would be so much of that that it just wouldn't even. Uh. <laughs> so I guess that takes us to our next topic and talking about um, the Yu-Gi-Oh community. And one of the things we both agreed on, we hated, was just the bashing amongst the community, especially going into things like um, deck profiles and why you run certain cards and et cetera, et cetera. What do you think about that? Uh, people. People have this weird this weird thing and it confuses me. Okay. So it's like YouTube lets you, you know, upload your deck profile or whatever. So other people can see it and maybe you can get help or maybe you just want to show it to the world. So you can also use YouTube to look up deck profiles if you're not the one uploading them. I've never understood why 
people watch someone else's deck profile with the intention of just accusing it of stuff. Like, there's the difference between constructive criticism and just bashing. It's like, if you... Okay, so, like, if your build of Metal Foes, just an example, doesn't match up with mine, and I get angry, like, why aren't you running, you know, three copies of this? Why are you only running two copies? What's wrong with you? This guy's an idiot. Right, right. If you already knew what the perfect Metal Foes deck build was, then why are you watching a video? You know what I mean? Like... If I already know what the how to perfectly play this deck and there's no other way to build it, then what reason do I have to be like watching videos? So it's like, do these people just just have free time and just go on you know YouTube and just complain, like just for the sake of complaining? Or it's probably just a dick measuring contest. They want to see if their build is better and if they're yeah. if you're running yeah. the most optimum Billy Break build and if you're not, they're just gonna troll you. Like, I don't know, trolling in, like, 2017 is way different than what it used to be back in, like, 2010. Like, these trolls, yeah, sure. they, be, they be trying to hit personal shit. <laughs> yeah, people, like, people go below the belt. Like, they go, and, they go you know, down, man. They go us down. being, like, YouTubers, if you're a YouTuber, you guys watching this, you, if you're just one of those people who watches, you don't know. If you're a YouTuber, you better have some thick skin. Like, people, oh, yeah, definitely. people will just attack, like, it's just personal attacks and, like, I don't know, I mean... In addition to just complaining about like deck lists, I feel like people just complain a little too much in general. Oh like, yeah, definitely. That goes into our actually second topic: bitching and complaining community. Like the community complains about everything. One of the things I wanted to focus on was the ban list in particular. Like every season, people bitch and complain about the ban list, and then guess what? We get the ban list. Oh, why didn't this get banned? Oh, why didn't I get this card? Yeah, et cetera, like et cetera. Like, Where's the ban list? Where's the ban list? You get a ban list. I hate this ban list. I hate this ban list. And it's just like. It's like, what do you people want? I mean, it can't always be perfect. And then I also never understood why people are like, this band list better murder Zodiacs. I, you know, I, I hate them. They're so annoying. It's like, well, it's like something's just going to take its place. Like, exactly. Don't. Like, once no. Zodiacs get banned, they're going to make a new deck that comes out. That's going to be meta. It's the same formula we all love and play, which is why a lot of people like me like to play rogue decks because we can be- try to at least try to break the formula. And make our own. I just think you just gotta chill. Like, let the game just do what it's gonna do. Like, people get so angry about these meta decks or whatever, and it's like, well, just chill out. Just let it happen. Like, it's been. I've played this game long enough to know. It's just gonna like that's just how it is. Like, decks are gonna be good if Zodiac's gone. There will just be a new crazy archetype. Or a deck from the past to come back and be good, like Mermails, for example. Yeah, and then it just even besides like ban lists, people just complain about you know why wasn't this reprinted or why is this oh, so yeah. expensive or you know just it's kind of like or like we were saying I know Duel Saga the Duel Saga hype people said it sucked. Yeah, it's like I can't wait for Duel Saga. It's not what they wanted. Uh, this set can you know burn. I hate it. Why is it so bad? Konami just trash and just like well uh, yeah <laughs> or one of the you know like. <laughs> Just, it's not always going to be perfect. Jeez. Well, one of the things I was talking about when everyone was like, oh my god, Konami, the game is too fast. You guys need to fix pendulums. The announcement of Link Summoning happens. Oh, yeah. oh my god, this fu- yeah. what the fuck? What the Rip fuck? Rip pendulums. Why do they try to kill this? Konami is so stupid. It's like, do you people ever, like... Don't get me wrong. I know Konami <laughs> isn't perfect. But I hate when the accusations go from like, oh, I don't like this, to they're trying to kill the game. They hate the players. And it's just like, okay, like, calm down. It's not right. that bad. Like, chill out. <laughs> I, mean, I think Konami does look like they're little, they profit a little bit enough off of Yu Gi Oh! just to keep it afloat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't like, agree with everything Konami does. I don't think anyone does. I mean, you know, even the most optimistic people know that Konami doesn't do everything right. But when people start saying, like, they hate the players, they're trying to kill this game, it's so awful. Ugh. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, why are you still <laughs> playing, man? Jeez. It's just like, man, it's like the Yu-Gi-Oh! community is mainly all man-childs, but they're all acting like fucking bitches, dude. Like, this is real talk. Like, yeah, sometimes dude, I, I feel like when I go on the forums, like Zodiac Duelist or just on Pojo or Raijo Organization, it's like, I know men are typing, but I feel like it's women typing just by the way they're acting. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just crazy. It can get whiny. Yeah, it it's, just, like, it's just childish. Entitled. It's just entitlement. It's just all kind of privilege and shit. But speaking of privilege, um, I want to talk about personally, I guess this is my bitch and complaining, the lack of local support. Like, a lot of people in um, 
it, like, and I don't know how it is in your city, Paul, but in Chicago, it's like we'll have a five dollar locals, uh, and we'll have a locals full of players. We might get an eight man tournament. Might. We'll have to. Uh, no, we have that problem where I am too. And like back when I was growing up, when I was like 15, 14, 13, 12, locals was always always thirty people and up, and the entry was like six to ten dollars. Like, how was it where you growing up when you were growing up playing local? Going actually, locals? believe it or not, it was the same way. I actually remember when our tournaments cost ten bucks for a while, and people would still be like lining up to oh, play. Yeah. Like definitely lining up like we would be like okay signups are starting and like people would hop up from their seats and like make this line because they didn't want to like miss the cutoff they'll be, like, the they'll, cutoff they'll was, be like, thirsty as hell yeah I yeah like, the cutoff was like 32 or 36 people or something like that and like people like wanted to sign up and they were excited to play and like nowadays it's like you if it's not a free tournament everyone's like eh, i don't know really exactly. play yeah and i don't know if it's like the culture being different now where people are just so picky with their money but you got to support your shops, man. Oh, like, yeah, definitely. Like, you got to play. You do. And it, I mean, it's a $5 local. It's like, most locals do $5 now. $5 first place usually gets four packs. I mean, you need play testing. Um, playing online is not going to – it's not as good as play testing as playing IRL. I personally feel like with the – I think, honestly, just with the amount of different local shops we have and also with the amount of – um the availability of YGO Pro – more people are just dec- this not inclined to go to locals. Cause remember back when I was growing up, locals was only on the weekend. Nowadays in Chicago, you can legit find a locals damn near every day of the week. Like a different shop actually, with holding a tournament every day of the week. Low key, I I think you're a you're right about like why go pro and stuff. Like it just kind of makes people not play a local school. It's like oh, I can just be like a why go pro warrior and just like play online and be just as good and not spend any money. And then, also, this is, like, my maybe just my personal gripe with Wigo Pro is the whole, like, everyone wants to play the OCG now. Oh. They want to play this game, like, six months in advance. But it's, like, if you're always playing the game six months in advance, then, like, when are you going to just come back down to Earth and just play at your locals like a normal person? <laughs> come back down to Earth. You know? Because that's how they get, where they're just, like, okay, like, I'm playing in the next... Format, you know, like when blah 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 is big, like people were playing Zodiacs back in July or something on Wigo Pro, and it's just kind of like, okay, that's cute and that's great and that's fun, but like, just go to your actual card shop and play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, because you can't be like a Wi-Fi warrior forever. Yeah, right? Wi-Fi you know? warrior. <laughs> like that's that's what we call them in Smash Brothers. Oh, like man, in that's competitive hilarious. Smash, like, there's people who don't come to tournaments. They just they're pretty good and like they have like a reputation online. Right, right. But like oh, Wi-Fi wars. But like that's what it is, and it's just like these people are like, oh, I'm playing Z- my Zodiac deck online, so I don't have to actually buy any cards in real life or ever enter tournaments. It's just, like that kills the real life scene. Right. Um. Okay. So I know we were saying we were just talking about six things, but one thing that you just brought up that I think is a big issue for me. When it comes down to, I guess, Konami, going back to Konami now, is the lack of um fusion between TCG and OCG. Like, that's something I've always... I, made, I even made a video about that. You guys can find it on my channel. Uh, talking about the the reason, the real reason behind the TCG and OCG balance split. But I think a bigger issue in the community is the fact that our formats are just different and we're 15 years into this game. Like... Match the yeah, you figure they would have meshed it by now. Yeah, Match the Gathering, and I believe Pokemon are all, both games that are worldwide. You can just take your deck, go across the world, and play in the same format. Where Yu-Gi-Oh, if you take your American deck, go to Japan right now, you probably will be able to play with a few adjustments, but you'll get your ass kicked because it's a completely different format, new cars, and etc. Um, How do you feel about that, Paul? How do you feel about the OCG just being different in general? Do you think it should be the same? Like, What do you think? What's your take on that? Just make it the same. There's not even that much I have to say about it. That's just... I mean, like, there isn't... Like, what else... What is there to say? It would just make it all consistent. Better. Yeah. There's I, I, no good reason for it to be different. Like, Maybe once upon a time when, like, back when the whole... When Wigo Pro and, like, all this stuff wasn't, like, really... Didn't exist. Like, people didn't keep up with the OCG as much. But when you consider, like, now that everyone basically follows the OCG religiously just like they do here. And that's where everyone gets their deck ideas and stuff and gets the scoop on the next meta. It's like, at this point, why haven't they just merged? I mean... Yeah, I definitely it, agree. 
Um, one of the things I was going to say about that, though, um, outside of just fusing, I, I, I had a theory. Like, I made a theory video. And I feel like one of the reasons is, like, Konami wants to test different... They want to milk the market, and they just want to, like, test different things with their ban list to sell more cards. For example, um, Raigeki's legal over here, but it's banned in the OCG. So, OCG... And same thing with OCG, they have Poppy's Feather Dusters, um, League over there, but banned over here. So all the OCG players can buy American product. That they want to buy their American Harper Feather Dusters, which are expensive. And then, I mean, I guess American players can't buy Japanese Regekis and use them in tournaments. But if you think about the amount of Japanese players that's probably trying to import the English cards, because the word on the street is English cards are pretty, worth a pretty penny in Japan. I feel like Konami wants to take advantage of the secondary market in their favor. And I feel like Konami also, I guess this is a more of a regional thing, they always want to give their players a, an advantage when it comes to the world championships in general. Like, if you ever realize, like, Japan wins, or an Asian company, company I mean, country, always win, usually win, does really well at the um, Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championships. And it's because they have a huge advantage, especially going into the 2018, no, 2017, World Championships, where they're going to have Link summoning at least two to three formats before we have it. So it's like they have a huge advantage, of, a step ahead of us, but when it comes to Link format, what do you think about that? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't keep up as much with, like, you know, kind of what wins Worlds. So I don't have, like, a super strong opinion on it. Okay. I, I just think that the formats need to have been merged. That's all I can really say. If If formats were merged and card releases were consistent, you know, a lot of this wouldn't like this, this. All these things wouldn't be a factor. You wouldn't have to do this whole like, oh, we got a special worlds ban list because things are different. Well, why isn't it just all the same anyway? Like, eh. yeah, I feel you. All right, y'all. So for a recap of this video, we talked about our um, my issues with OCG. Apologies, Davis, and but pretty much, uh, we talked about lack of locals, um, people bitching, and complaining, the bashing in the community, and on Konami side, we talked about the social media stuff. We talked about how they need to focus more on their social media. I talked about how strict judges need more need to be. And we talked about better prize structure. Now, if there was anything you guys felt like me and Paul may have missed on, I would want that for you guys to post in the comment section down below. Um, any shout-outs, Paul, you want to give right now? Anything you want to talk about before the video closes out? Uh, shout-outs to all my fans who are watching. And uh, shout-outs to Chris for letting me be in this video. And subscribe to Team APS because he does a lot of videos. And... He's my Yugi 2 bro. I've been following him since 6K subs, and now he's at 56 subs. It's amazing. So, with that being said, um, this is Chris from Innovation Yu-Gi-Oh! and Paul from Team MPS, and we're signing out. Peace, guys, and stay innovative. Deuces.